is a V no. Timer. Oh, there's a timer. What's up, YouTube? HBJ here, and I'm coming at you guys today with the top 64 French Nationals Harpy deck profile. So, how did I get a hold of this? Well, actually, this was um, someone who brought it to me. Uh, I was uh, Monday morning. I received a message on my Facebook page, and one of the players said that they had heard a deck talk in the TC a harpy deck topped in the TCG at Nationals. And I'm like, oh, okay, well can you find the video and you know if you are the deck list and then I can go from there. So the person didn't know much of his own because he heard it through a video. So luckily enough the video got uploaded sometime around the time I was watching E3. So when my phone started buzzing like crazy, it was this. So I just wanna thank um that person, um, if that person is watching, t for uh, finding the deck profile and, and notifying me and a lot of the other Harpy players who wanted to see what this deck was. And shout out to Nasir Karma, because this is his deck profile. Um, and congratulations for your top 64. I know it's pretty much a very long and tedious journey because there is so many decks in this format right now that anything can possibly win Worlds, anything can possibly win WCQs and Nationals, and it's just crazy. So, without further ado, let's talk about it. So, um, his starting lineup is three copies of the beautiful Harpy Perfumer, three copies of Harpy Channeler, three copies of Harpy Harpist, three copies of Harpy Lady 1, one Harpy Queen, and three copies of Ash Blossom Joyous Springs, three copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, and two copies of Gamma Seal the Sea Turtle Kaiju. Next up is the spells, and he's running for the Harpy spells. He's running three copies of Hysteric Sign, three copies of Elegant Egotist, two copies of Harpy's Hunting Ground, and one copy of Alluring Mirror Split. For the regular spells, he's running three copies of Pot of Desires, two copies of Call by the Grave, two copies of Super Polymerization, and one copy of Double or Nothing. For the trap cards, there's three copies of Harpy's Featherstorm, two copies of Hysteric Party. Then for the rest of the traps, we got a set of Evenly Matched, two copies of Heavy Storm Duster, and two copies of Trap Trick. For the extra deck, he's running one Great Fly, one Salaman Great Violet Chimera, one copy of Starving Venom Dragon, uh, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, one copy of Mud Dragon of the Swamp, and then for all those Exceed Monsters, one copy of Ray Raptor Ultimate Falcon, one copy of the Utopia package. We have Utopia the Lightning, Utopia himself, and Utopia Double or Nothing, because actually at the end. Um, then we have one copy of Tornado Dragon, one copy of Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon, one copy of Ice Beast Zero Fine, one copy of Lightning Chidori, one copy of Evil Swarm Exciton Knight, one copy of Abyss Dweller, and of course the ever faithful Gaga Ga Cowboy. For, the, for his side deck, which is the first we're going to get into. We have one copy of uh, the Winged Dragon of Ross Spearmo, three copies of Dino Wrestler Paratops, one co two copies of Artifact Lancia, two copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, one copy of Nateria Exterio, two copies of Mystic Mind, two copies of Waking the Dragon, and two copies of Red Reboot. So that is pretty much it for his starting lineup. This is by far one of the most unique Harpy decks I've ever seen. It takes one of the biggest risks by running one of the biggest riskiest cards a Harpy deck could ever run. And that is Pot of Desires. As we all know, the community has its mixed feelings about draw power. Um, whether it's from Upstar Goblins to Pot of Greed to whatever draw cards Konami puts into the game. One of the most controversial is still by today's standards is Pot of Desires because that is minus 10 on top of your deck to draw two cards from your deck. If your deck is not equipped to deal with such situations, you can easily lose out on a lot of potential cards. You can lose out on a, a potential engine that you would need. You can lose 
potential setup cards. And essentially considering the fact he's running um the only one of in his deck he's actually the only two one of that he's running in his deck are the one Harpy Queen and the one double or nothing. You would expect he to triple or double the forces so that way he'd at least draw into them. Um but it is a very, very unique deck. Um, there's no Harpy Oracles, there's no Harpy Dancer, there's no Harpy Lady Sisters. Um, so it's really just relying on its rank 4 setup and its rank 4 plays to the extreme. Uh, not really much of trying to thin out the deck because you have cards like Potter Desires to do that for you. Um, Harpy Harpist. I think we pretty much all know at this point the lineup of the Harpy Ladies. You know, Perfumer, uh, when she's normal or special, gets that Harpy Lady that spell a trap with sisters in his text from your deck to your hand. If you control a level 5 or higher harpy, you can uh, add two cards from your deck instead of one. Uh, harpy Channeler, the summoner monk of the harpy archetype. Discard a harpy card, so summon a harpy monster from your deck. Uh, while you control a level 7 or higher dragon, uh, level when you control a dragon type monster, her level changes from 4 to 7. Why did I forget that? That's like the one important thing I mentioned a lot of times. Um, so this helps tr tremendously with Harpies, with Harpy Perfumer because of the fact that with a monster like Phantasma running around in this deck, you have access to Chandler's level becoming uh, 7. And then the benefits from that is, bam, you have access to a monster like Perfumer who can activate her effect. There aren't too many, there aren't any rank 7s in this deck. There's only rank 4s. And the only link monster is Great Fly. So you do question a lot of what the probabilities of a lot of things were. I think it was, from what my understanding of the French language is, and from what he was saying, was just, um, the Great Fly was just to be a conductor to <laughs> conductor to summon a lot of the things from the extra deck. Most of the things that he played in his extra deck were one of that he knew either they could stay on the field or help go into another setup. Um, with the combination of super polymerization, he had a lot of outs to a lot of decks he didn't he was expecting to see there. You know, you can't super poly your opponent's cards and turn them into monsters. So seeing cards like um Violet Chimera, uh, Venom Fusion Dragon, and of course the Mud Dragon was just ways of saying, okay, if my opponent's going to play these cards, then bam, I can have a counter to them by taking their monsters and then turning their monsters into the monster they're going to try to summon and take advantage of that monster to my side. Which is probably one a very strategic move in this game is to try to take advantage of those types of situations. Um, the other thing that I honestly say is, I know a lot of people are probably going to scream, well, what if you can't afford the deck? What if you can't afford Phantasmans? Because they're still pretty high right now. I just looked up a lot of cards. Um, I mean, you don't have to run exactly what he's running. You can run your variation of your deck and still do well. I think it's just if you have to plan for your matchups and plan ahead of what you think you're going to run into. Because for the most part, his extra deck, it's pretty much a really good, his side deck is pretty, it's really, really good. Um, has a lot of balance and a lot of things that you can easily take advantage of. One of the things that I do, well, I'll go to the side deck in a minute, but I want to still focus on the main deck. And I actually want to talk about this double or nothing. This is a strategy that a lot of players are picking up if you're a rank four spamming deck. Um, is, you know, Utopia Double in combinations with Double or Nothing and the effects that the monsters have. Because this is an amazing setup card. And Double or Nothing, if you aren't familiar with it, this came out when literally Generation Force, the first set for the Zexel series. Um, when a monster's attack is negated, target that monster. It can make a second attack, but second attack, and if it does, double the attack of that monster during damage step only. So what you do with this, and I believe Utopia Double, is it's going to amplify Utopia Double's attack power even more than what it is. And I think it's a quick effect. Yeah, you detach one material from this card to add one double or nothing from your deck to your hand. Then you to summon one Utopia monster from your deck except for Utopia Double. By using this monster face up, as you control as material. And if you do, that attack of that monster becomes double. It can attack directly for the turn that its card is exceeds something. You transfer any material from this card, you can only use this effect of Utopia uh, double once per turn. So pretty much what you do with this is you find one of your opponent's monsters, 
you you stop its attack, you beat into it, you activate this effect, you go into Utopia of the Lightning, you swing Utopia of the Lightning, you trigger Utopia of the Lightning's effect to make its attack to uh, 5,000. Since nothing else can be activated during the damage step, you trigger double or nothing, and then bam, your opponent can't do anything to you. Because Utopia of the Lightning says your opponent can't activate uh, material, can't activate anything while this card attacks. If I'm not missing. During the damage step only, discard battles on opponent's monster. I'm trying to read the fact that says... An attack. Discard battle. Yeah, your opponent cannot activate cards in response to this monster's attack until the end of the damage step. So, pretty much, Utopia the Lightning can just swing into a monster, activate double or nothing, cancel its attack, have it attack again, and then have it double its attack. So, then it's 1k attack damage. And then, bam, it's taking out your opponent's monster and then pretty much winning you the game as an option. So, it's one of those things that you look at one card and you're like, okay, maybe in the, maybe there's going to be some additional cards to help set it up. And then, bam, here we have additional cards to set that card up. The Ash Blossom and the Joyous Spring. Let's talk about the one of the most broken hand traps in the Yu-Gi-Oh! game right now. Um... This is honestly one of the cheapest hand traps right now. We can honestly... No, because Effect Veiler is still pretty cheap. Because she's a common. And they've been stuffing her in almost every other structure that... Um, Ash Blossom recently just came out in the Soul Burner structure deck. Which had, of course, the Salaman Grapes. Um, and how flexible that deck can be when trying to add her back to the hand. Honestly, I think the hand traps right now are amazing. We have a good range of them. Um, even monsters you wouldn't think would be hand traps have become hand traps. So I was looking at you, Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, which is still, which is now one of the most expensive hand traps because I believe it's still in the 100 plus range, and it's not getting any worse. It's not even getting lower, guys. Unfortunately, yeah, Thanos Dragon is still pretty up there, and it's surprisingly weird because. You would never think that a card like this could do so much and be so much be so beneficial. And then it's like, yeah, I want to wreck a combo when my opponent decides to link something. So the only way this card doesn't really help you is if your opponent's not running a deck that links something. And there aren't any cheap variations of cards to play right now, sadly enough, that equal in this card's um, variation of play. Not to mention... If you don't want to run this, I mean, you can still run other cards. You have a handful of hand traps still in the game that aren't max C and got banned. So you have range of stuff you can still use to defend yourself against certain situations. But that is the thing. It's certain situations that these hand traps can work and not work in. So it all's up to how you as the player build your deck and how you as the player can go into a lot of fruition in I mean, go into a lot of combinations and plays with those decks that you have. Um, I guess we're going to move right along to the evenly matches, which is a great strategic move because you want to control... Well, especially in combination, if you go second, you're rocking the Mystic Mind combo, which I never really thought about that um, as an option. Like, I never thought to see evenly match in... Uh, Mystic Mind in the same deck. It's actually not in a Harpy deck, because I'm like, wait a minute, we have Harpy Thunder Ground. But then you think about it, most decks are not playing a lot of spell cards. Most decks are not playing heavy back row. Unless you're Ultra Ice, or you're Mystic Mind. And then you have to have options to help you deal with Mystic Mind and stuff like that. So, luckily enough, you can easily use a card like this and take advantage of it as best as you possibly can. We have Heavy Dust Storm, which is pretty much just an additional back row destruction. So say, for instance, you don't get into your Harpy's Hunting Ground, you have this to help you, to back you up um, in terms of getting rid of stuff. And you can easily activate this um, on your opponent's turn and not have to worry about your next battle phase. Um, or the turn you activate this card, which does come in handy. Um, trap Trick. Uh, very odd man out. But the way this card just sets itself up is not a problem. Banish a normal trap in your deck. Set a normal trap in your deck with the same name. So you can flush out that heavy dust storm. You can flush out... Is this a counter trap? You, know, you can flush out your evenly matches. On a rare occasion, if you're bold enough, you can get your feather storm. So that way you don't have to deal with a lot of your modern monster effects. 
but it's a rare occasion if you want this to happen. Now we're going to talk about Harpy's Feather Storm in one of Harpy's best traps, because, well, we only have two acts. Well, we have three, but besides this in Harpy, in Hysteric Party, these two are honestly the most go-to trap cards for Harpies, because you have your massive summon in Hysteric Party, and you have your no monster effect defense in uh, Harpy's Feather Storm. And this card has gotten a lot of a lot of us out of some very tight situations thanks to dealing because we have to deal with so many monster effects so i'm glad to see that we have such a great utility card in such a in a trap card like this is part of the reason why trap cards are seeing a lot of play now because we have access to cards that are saying okay you can just play me from your hand or meet while you're meeting these conditions or if you control no cards like cards like evenly matched or infinity impermeance you can play these cards from your hand without having to control things and then still benefit from how powerful of effect they have uh, we're moving on to the extra deck and i mean we've already talked about the utopia package we've talked about the fusion monsters um great fly being at one isn't much of a thing I, like i said from what my understanding is what from what uh nazar was was saying it was pretty much just if i got it i got it and you know there's a lot of great one us that this deck can easily make um it does give a good power boost to a lot of the wind monsters in this deck we're looking at you phantasmal dragon lightning chidori and tornado dragon which still by this day i i still call it the toolbox of engines because rank four deck because harpies are still a rank four deck they have a ton of utility to the rank four engines. Don't ever forget that. And I'm very, very excited. You know, it's a very good thing that we have such access to a lot of those ranged cards. And we don't have to worry about, oh, do we have this or do we have that? Because we still have access to a lot of those cards. Especially when we need them to get us out of tight situations. So now, moving on from that, we have Abyss Dweller to help us deal with the graveyard and nasty graveyard effects. We have Cowboy for that 800 points of damage that can be crucial because of the whole time situation. Evil Sworn Exciton Knight to blow away the field. Uh, we have, of course, Ice B Zero Fine, a beautiful shutdown card in the form of such an elegant monster. Uh, we have, of course, the ever faithful servant of Harpy Ladies. And yesterday, Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon. And a lot of people have been. You know sleeping on phantasmal but when conductor comes out hopefully sometime soon eventually we won't be sleeping on the combination between harpy's pet phantasmal dragon and harpy conductor we move on of course to the tornado dragon which is not actually a dragon it's actually a yerm and the crazy thing about it is that how this card is real is just really really good it it's a MST on either player's turn. You can take advantage of it by blowing up your own hysteric sign. Uh, don't blow up your alluring mirror split because that's not considered a um, harpy card effect. It's not a harpy monster or a harpy card, so be careful of that little factor. And then you can really just benefit so much from a ton of the support that you can get from everything on the board when it's being destroyed, especially in harpies because of how accessible a card like this can be and it's not that hard to even make because you easily can make two level four monsters and benefit from both of them um let's move on to the ultimate falcon as we move on to the ultimate falcon we can move on to the extra deck because now a lot of people are going to question why the ultimate falcon well, the ultimate falcon has a ton of ultimate effects um once returned during the day until the end of the into the end phase uh, you can make all monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and if uh and if your opponent controls no face up monsters you inflict damage to your opponent the other effect of this card is that it's unaffected by other cards that is literally its effect it is unaffected by other cards so your opponent's gonna have a very hard time unless they can find something big enough to to stop this or stop it from coming out from the trap card waking the dragon so this is a very unique card that came out and what it does is if it's destroyed by your opponent's card effect and it's either in sent to the graveyard or banished you start to summon a monster from your extra deck and that helps you summon a monster like ray raptor ultimate falcon 
and the combination of cards that you can easily get from the extra deck that are just completely broken, um, thanks to this card, and it is amazing, and I don't think it has any restrictions to it, no, oh, okay, yeah, it does have the restrictions, I think most cards say this card can only be exceed summon or stuff like that, but when you got a giant bird looking at you, with about 3,500 attack power, and it can be affected by other cards, yeah, this thing is gonna go crazy, and if it had material, it could detach material from it, to make your opponent's monsters lose 1,000 points, yeah, 1,000 attack, and then your opponent's cards and their effects cannot be activated, so, yeah, this is one big bird, um, Red Reboot's a great option for a lot of decks in this game that do run those situational counter traps, um, and then you force the counter traps on the field, and then you take your hunting ground, and you blow those up, the Mystic Mine, um, in combination with this, can be a nasty combination so do watch out for that i was actually very shocked to see mystic mind in the in a side deck of a heartbeat play of any player's deck to be honest and just how abrupt this card has caused so much chaos in the game uh for what it does right now i was very shocked myself to see it um but i do understand that it's a, it the way its effect is you can take advantage of it if you um, if you plan out a lot of your stuff. And that's something that I read into it. So I don't know. I might keep mine around. I just hope that it doesn't get banned or limited. And then it kind of just hurts everybody at that point. Um, Ghost Ogre is just another additional hand trap. Which is very... Um, like I said, hand traps are very diverse on how the player wants to run it. Um, I'm almost forgetting the Terrier Exterior. Um, Phoenix Materia Beast and Materia Barkion. I don't know how this card, maybe this is a combination with Waking the Dragon. I don't know if Waking the Dragon can get Exterior, because that's a, I don't know. It Maybe it can? I think it can, because this doesn't have, it doesn't restrict it. Um, this Fusion Summon card can only be conducted with this. Okay, so yeah, you possibly can get this out with Waking the Dragon, so fuck. And not have to do the whole fusion thing. Because it just says get a monster from the extra deck. Um, and I think this is just talking about the fusion summon. So you're not fusion summoning. You're just such summoning a monster from the extra deck. So, oh, well, look. We have even more crazy things to worry about, huh? <laughs> Ain't that something? Um, Lancia is just a good counter to Thunder Dragon. A lot of decks that like to banish. The Terratop is an option of destruction. To get rid of a lot of things here and there. And a pretty beefy wall, um, offensive wall, to be honest, um, and then we have the Winged Dragon of Ross Spear Mode, what you're pretty much supposed to do with this card is just drop it on the field that has a ton of monsters on it, and laugh at your opponent, it's like a kaiju type of situation, and then you can just drop something, you can drop something strong enough to take it out, because really, what does it have, zero attack, zero defense, um, Field, shift the control of this card to the owner during the end phase of the next turn. It can't attack. Your opponent cannot target this card for attacks or card effects. Uh, you can tribute this card to someone when you're uh, Yeah, so it's not. It's just a drop on top of your opponent's cards and then get happy. Because it's pretty much like a kaiju type of situation. Which is also funny because you're dragging kaijus. But hey, you don't have to run everything everybody else is running. So that's pretty much it for this. Um, my opinion about it um, is a very unique deck. I am not going to lie. And it is a very strategic setup. It's a very unique setup. And honestly, I think a lot of people are going to have their own opinions about it. But one thing I can honestly say is that from one player to another, congratulations for your top, uh, Mr. Karma. And wishing you some more success other than that i will end the video here i will make sure there is a link to the french legacies youtube channel so you guys can see the see their channel in the video i hope you guys enjoy this video and more content from this guy truly don't forget to like comment share subscribe and i will oh also hit that notification bell where you guys want to be informed of when i am uploading new content Check out, the mess check out my discussion boards so when you guys can know what times I will be live streaming on Twitch. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow the social media link, and I will catch you guys next time. HPJ, signing out. Take care.